Hi, let's talk about you are stepping into your feminine energy, you've understood the benefits of it, and now you want him to step into his masculine. What does that mean? Where do we go with that? Where do we go from here? And why would you even want that? The first thing to keep in mind is if you are thriving in your feminine energy and do you want him to step into his masculine, but you met him while he was in his feminine energy, then there is two things that could happen. Thing number one is he follows you and resonates with your new femininity and just explodes in, you know, happiness because he wants to thrive in his masculine also. Or the second option of what could happen is that he is not down for it. He might be in his feminine energy because it's more comfortable for him, because that's where he thrives. And so in doing this, one of two things could happen. You could have the best, most bombastic relationship of your life with both of you, with your balanced polarities, or you could end up two people in your feminine energy. And that's a disaster because you're just going to repel each other. It's like magnets. So knowing that going into this video, that is the first thing. And the second thing is this, you cannot force anybody to do anything. It's like a diet. You want to change your diet. You want your partner or your spouse to also do that thing. It's on them. The best thing you can do is probably inspire them through doing it yourself and them seeing the changes in you. Do not come and say, look, babe, I've decided to be my feminine energy. You need to man up, or get into your masculine right now. Don't do it, baby. Don't do it. It's not going to go down well. You stay on your journey and let him go on his. You cannot force him. But as women, we can't deny that we do crave it. We crave it. So this is the video for you. If you've realized you crave it and you have enough insight and forethought to know that maybe some of the actions that you are taking are stopping him from being in his masculine energy. So let's, let's go through those and discuss what we can do to help him shift. The first and most important thing and the hardest thing to get around is control. There is toxic masculinity that everyone goes on about online. I mean, it's talked about till the cows come home. We know exactly what it is. You know, patriarchy, the works. But what is toxic femininity? What men have in strength and power and, you know, dominance in the world, we have in our persuasion, inspiration, coercion. We all know the expression mean girl from school. There isn't a mean guy. He could be a bully, but it's usually one. And he's usually an outsider. But a mean girl, a group that could just destroy your reputation or make you guess like you think you're something that you're not. We have this influence on the men that we are with. And by you controlling him constantly and trying to tell him what to constantly do, you are using that dark negative feminine power in order to convince him that he is not capable. You need to understand that by constantly pushing in his face that he's not capable, have you done this? Have you stacked the shelf? Have you done this? Have you done this? You are forcing him into incompetence. And yes, there is fake incompetence in the world, but I'm talking to you because you're the woman watching this. So I am trying to help you. If I was talking to him, I would tell him another set of things that would help him but this is for you. You cannot keep pushing somebody into believing that they do everything wrong and that they need to be controlled and essentially mothered and still expecting them to step up. There needs to be a transitional period where you just let go and you stop. And one of two things could happen. He could step up to the plate and get into his masculine and lead, or you'll realize that both of you are just sitting there and nothing happens but you need to give it a month. You need to give him space to realize that, hey, I've got an opportunity now. I can really expand what I wanna do. Who am I without her telling me exactly what to do? Who am I without her planning, without her being in her masculine? Where's the masculine energy coming from? That is the first step, controlling. Where are you going? Why are you going? What does that mean? Where did you put that? Did you stack the fridge like I told you to? Don't you want to see who the man naturally is? Don't you want to see who you chose for their nature, for their truth? Imagine somebody had to control you and heard you 
like a farm animal because they had such little faith in the reality of who you are. I don't know how that would feel, but that's definitely what we do to men. Hand in hand is nagging. That's number two, nagging. The battery died, but we moved because we're talking about something important. The feeling of constantly nagging at somebody and trying to influence them through beration is an interesting concept because it might cause them to shift and do what it is you want them to do. But ask yourself whether you want to live a life whereby you are the driver of the ship and you have no faith in the people around you. That they might do what you want them to do, but there is not going to be an inspiration of them feeling like you are something or somebody that they want to move mountains for. And let's be honest, it's like what we crave as a woman. That's why nagging feels so bad. When you're at work, let's say when you're in your masculine energy and you're running an office or a team, you might feel quite powerful and you're like, right guys, this is what we're gonna do. I don't wanna see you guys slacking, come on. You don't feel bad about yourself at the end of the day. You don't feel like an energetic shittiness, let's put it that way. But if you have to nag your man into doing what it is you want him to do, at the end of the day, when you put your head down on the pillow and you're falling asleep, you're not like, yes, got him to do that thing. You're thinking, why is it like this? There is something in you that isn't enjoying it. And that is because you are driving that ship. So stop controlling, stop nagging. Let's see this person for who they truly are. Which brings me to step number three, playfulness. If you are going to be in your feminine energy and you wanna see him in his masculine, what kind of masculine man is he? What is he gonna to bring to the table? Let's see him for who he truly is. And the only way to do that is to diffuse the energy that we've been living in from being in our masculine for so long and for him realizing that he cannot be with playful energy. The jokes that he doesn't say anymore, the playful energy that you two don't have together needs to come back. And the only way that could happen is if you are playful as opposed to questioning him about everything. What did you mean when you said that? Is that how you see me? Do you think I look good in this do you think stop trying to get into his brain and pry out the information that to him seems so pivotal i've come from a background of that it's also really attached to anxious attachment where whatever value that person holds means so much to you that you want to pull out what it is that you think they see you in a negative light about and essentially it causes a fight because a lot of times when a man is in masculine energy, he just wants to make you happy. That is what he wants to see. And if you lack that playful, happy energy, he cannot even cling to what it is he could do to make you happy. And I know in the comments, you're gonna to write to me, oh, but he's not done it for so long, da 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 da. First, you need to remove the wall of criticism, nagging, controlling, and deploy that playfulness. Things that he used to say that would bother you, just drop it. I used to be so bothered by comments that men would make to me when they meant something in my life that it would just ruin everything. I chose to take things lightly. If you love that person and you wanna be with them, try taking things lightly for a certain amount of time. Number four is you have to tell him what you want, not tell him off about what you don't want. Can you see the difference? If a masculine man's main prerogative is to make his woman happy, then surely you need to understand that you need to give him the algorithm for how that happiness can be created. It's like any plant. If he is the gardener and you're the flower, it makes him happy to see you bloom and it makes the feminine happy to be cared for, watered, provided for, etc. You need to give him the steps, like the pamphlet to that plant. You need to give him that pamphlet. So as opposed to telling him off when he does something wrong, I want you to try saying, I love it when you, I love it when you this, I love it when you took me, um, you know, to that barbecue restaurant. I don't know, from the top of my head. I love it when you give me small gifts. It's not gonna shift straight away, but try it. Try telling him the manuscript of how to make you happy. One sentence and just leave it randomly. I love it when you put gas in my car. It's so helpful. 
when you live in a family life and family life is in like you both looking after children you're both managing the household together we intrinsically do a lot more we notice a lot more we see other people's needs a lot more as a blanket statement not everyone's the same but let's just go with it we're always there sometimes it's hard to tell him what it is we love because we're like well surely he should know but often they're not as emotionally intelligent as we are I'm just trying to give you the manual to make you happy as in you watching this I want you to be happy and sometimes you have to come over your own hurdles and push through your own obstacles in order to do so I had them too I was all about yes but he should know and why should I tell him and I tell him give him the pamphlet number five goes hand in hand is admire his actions not his looks and his like oh wow you've got such green eyes great he's got green eyes admire his actions current and previous if you want him to repeat actions more and do them you need to be the witness the feminine witnesses the masculine's efforts and the feminine puts boundaries so when he does something you don't like don't go on about it say it once that's it i don't like that remove yourself from the situation if you must i get a lot of you asking me what to do if a man i don't know raises their voice at you you need to remove yourself from that situation a boundary is a boundary your boundaries have to be very very strong but at the same time you need to admire his actions you need to be the mirror through which he sees himself because biologically women are the choosers of the men animal kingdom us biology everything we choose the men we say yep i rate this highly i'm going to marry him as in marry him as in like sleep with him mate with him have kids with him because i rate the qualities that he has highly and at some point we stop so if you want him to be in his masculine energy voice those things it might feel cheesy i love it that you always look after us as a family i love it that you plan this date you know voice it admiration i think a strong point to make is number six is understand your way isn't always the best way if your way was the best way then maybe we should all just marry ourselves there is a reason we get with the person that we get with there is something he's got to teach you it's not possible that you know the right way about everything I like to stick in my own lane and if you want your man to step up in his masculinity you need to give him open fields in areas of your lives you cannot be the CEO of every department there needs to be an essence of letting go a good thing to ask yourself is if you are worried at this point that nothing will ever happen nothing will ever happen I think scarily enough it's very important to ask yourself why you chose the man that you chose and it's very important to do this exercise of letting go of control and letting him step into his masculine because it's almost pivotal and vital to find out who it is that this person is at the end of the day what is this matchup why have i started not to trust him is it me or him is it me that feels the need to mother him and all these things you need to remember why it was that you found him so inspiring why did you choose him most of the time people go oh he was like this but now he changed and he doesn't anymore so he got ruined with you he was ruined with you hmm that's interesting it, it was it time is he like spoiled milk did you just get spoiled or is it the atmosphere i don't know very important number seven is the light of focus should be on the feminine in the relationship you should be focused on you and then he'll be focused on you it's almost like you dictate the nature of how the relationship goes now just because you focus on yourself doesn't mean every single man in the world will focus on you but it certainly will do one of two things if you focus on you your progress your passions what you love in life you will be like a magnet to people who want to be around you so if he already loves you and wants to be with you you are going to be like a beacon of shining inspiration to him where he's just trying to get into your life it's a proven hypothesis that when women focus on themselves and can make themselves happy men almost want to compete with the happiness that you're having from somewhere else and i put that bluntly and almost very dramatically but people are more attracted to people who are already happy not people who are miserable and needy and want something from them and if you truly are miserable and needy and there is some issue like that 
then therapy is the thing that you need to do for yourself. You need to focus the light of self-improvement, of self-love, of, of everything about yourself and stop focusing on him. You cannot have time to think about why didn't he text me back? What is he thinking about doing with me? If you are thinking about that so much, you're in that driving masculine energy or you're in a negative feminine energy. It's a wounded feminine, like he, he, he's gonna abandon me and all these things. You need to work through it. I have a video um, about how I change my attachment style and you can watch it, maybe it will help you. But it needs to be self-work. If you want him to be in his masculine, you need to literally, if it's a spotlight, direct the spotlight onto yourself, not on him. Because when you're directing the spotlight on him, you're forcing him to be in his feminine. He's the important one. What does he want to eat? What does he want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to eat? Who are you, baby? Who are you is the important question. How is he supposed to love you and admire you when you've become a gray, empty shell of nothingness? When you've become a fan of him? What can he admire? There's a reason that goddesses are worshipped because she is the goddess of something, right? If you look at mythology, she is the goddess of something. If she was the goddess of nothingness, how could he worship her? Number eight, if you praise someone for something that they are, they will become that. And if you penalize for something that you think somebody is, they will become that. It is a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's exactly along the same lines as manifestation. Everyone has good in them, okay? Everyone that you would choose in your life, okay? I'm hoping. Some people are, I, I, I don't even understand how some people exist in this world with the things they do, but let's just say the partner you chose has good in them. Start to notice it. Start to praise it. Start to speak light into it. Start to speak word into it. Start to really admire them. Start to believe it in your core, like manifestation, like when you start to believe in something for yourself and then you can bring it into your life. You need to start to see beauty in your partner and, and have faith and belief in them. You almost need to deploy that in order to see what happens. People can really thrive when when somebody truly believes in them and praises them and sees beauty in them, especially when it's a feminine to a masculine, when she sees what he can do, when he sees his potential, hence the wording of every great man, there's a great woman behind him. And I know it's been twisted into like, oh, why is she behind him? She should be in front. Sure, it works in both ways. But I believe that I can s almost speak light into the partner that I'm with in order for them to excel more so many times that it happens that men exceed expectation. I think m many people have spoken about it. Barack Obama, if he didn't have his wife, he wouldn't be where he is. You need to start seeing the goodness in him for that goodness to be created. And you know yourself when somebody sees goodness in you, when somebody says to you, I know you'll be there for me because you're that type of person. It's much more inspiring to be there for them as opposed to if they say, yeah, I don't know if you'll turn up, whatever, if you let me down, you let me down. You yourself know in your heart as a human being, which person you'd be more inspired to be there for. Lastly, number nine, I think the most inspiring thing, you know about the male gaze, how they see women, but the most inspiring thing for a man is the feminine gaze on them. It's almost like they can picture themselves as to who they're potentially gonna be in this world, the type of man they can be and the type of masculinity they can deploy through your eyes. And in order for him to feel that is, you need to show him that you need him. We've been told a lot not to do that because in our society, what's celebrated is independence. You can be by yourself. You can spend time by yourself. You don't need other human beings. You should be able to be a man and a woman and your own best friend and literally just sitting in your house behind your white picket fence and be alone. You don't even need to have children. You don't need to have a pet, nothing. That's just you. But the reality is, is we are interpersonal beings. We, we need each other, the structure of who we are even down to attachment style when someone is born, if they are not hugged in experiments, they suffer and die despite being fed whilst the babies who are malnourished but hugged thrived. We are so dependent on it. So I know you've been told a lot that, you know, men aren't shit and you can do it all alone and you can, but why do you want to tell that to somebody? Don't you want to show him that you need him? Give him the freedom, stop controlling him, but at the same time, praise him and show him that he is needed by you. How do you show someone that you need them? By deploying genuine gratitude, praise, seeing goodness in them, telling them how much they enhance your life. 
and understanding that relying on someone doesn't make you powerless. I want to rely on my husband. I'm not gonna tell this to his face, but I'll tell you, I could do it without him, of course. But what kind of dynamic would it make in a relationship for me to sit there and tell him to his face? What is the purpose? What is the reason? What am I trying to prove? Everyone who comes in my life, I try and improve their self-worth and self-knowledge of being somebody who is worth having around and important. And you know yourself. If somebody tells you, I need you, you're the best friend I've ever had. I couldn't do it without you. It really motivates you to do more. So try it. Try doing those things. But remember, at the end of the day, you cannot make somebody into something that they're not and you can't force a square into a star shape by pulling its corners. But you can certainly work on you and you can make the shifts that would mean either he steps up into his masculinity or if he's not the one for you and you're disappointed, the right person will come in to fill that square shape. Anyway, I hope this video helped and I'll see you in the next one.